Ugh, all this math homework is so tiring. What the heck? My coffee cup! Um, we're literally the same thing. No, you're not. You're working on functions, right? Yeah. Great. Let's take the function f of x equals x cubed. In a function, specific inputs undergo a math to get outputs. So the input of negative 2 is cubed for an output of negative 8, which is right there. If we were to inverse every operation, the function now takes the cubed root of input, basically switching the inputs and outputs. So the input of negative 8 is cubed root for an output of negative 2. When graphed, to look sideways because the inverse switches the x and y values, but any point at f of x can still be found on its inverse. Also, the inverse is continuous, meaning that I can smoothly roll down it. All of this means that there's a homeomorphism, or continuous mapping, between every point on f of x and a point on the inverse of f of x. But where's my coffee cup? Imagine that I'm some function that undergoes an inverse operation to transform into a coffee cup. and still map a point on the original, sprinkle, to the inverse. You can only do this when the genius remains the same. A genius? So not me. No, a gene is the largest number of non-self-intersecting closed loops that can be drawn in a surface without separating it. For a sphere, one closed loop separates into two pieces for a genus of zero. When we add a hole, like a torus or donut, the surface is still intact with one loop, meaning it has a genus of one. I'm gonna be honest, my donut friend. That seems a little bit useless. Hey, no, let me tell you about the hairy ball theorem. Hair on a sphere can be imagined like a vector, something with magnitude and direction. These vectors can never be brushed smoothly around the sphere. However, any shape with genus 1 can have hair that is smoothly combed. So you and the coffee cup had the same genus, meaning you're topologically equivalent, and had the same mathematical properties. That is pretty cool. Still tired, though.